Well, one minute I'm nervous. I might stutter a little bit. I'm not a lawyer. I'll do the best I can. I want you to factor that in. I picked your people because you look like my peers. I felt that you could put yourself in my position. <clears throat> everything I wrote, everything I said in the last month or two was prepared for this day. Now I'm here, not saying I'm not going to say it, but it did change a little bit listening to Mr. Miller's presentation. The statue I'm charged with violating, witness tampering, and it specifically says, I normally engaged in conduct that would cause a witness or informant to, and then list four things. Testify falsely. You will hear testimony. You will hear comments, statements in the video. There's numerous videos in each one of these videos. I'm asking for the witness to come testify. So if you ask me, number one is out the door. Never do I ask the witness to testify falsely, or not testify. Now, the exact opposite. The prosecutor's on that shot. You'll see testimony saying that. You'll see documents. You're going to have to zoom in. You can't have that shot. You're going to have to zoom in. 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 You're it's easy for the state now to go back and say, this is what I did. That's not what I was thinking at that time. Okay? To withhold testimony, never in these documents do I say anything about withholding testimony. Exact opposite. The document that Mr. Boyle just talked about are lawsuits. That's what it comes with a summons. It specifically is asking you to come to the court and answer this summons. Again, the exact opposite of what I've been charged with after the fact. To absent himself from, from a proceeding? Again, everything that the state just said, factually, and I don't think you people uh, will disregard facts, factually, Everything I did was the exact opposite. Serving someone with a lawsuit, number three, to absent himself. How am I asking a person to absent himself about serving them with a lawsuit? The summons. To answer these questions and come to the court. That's specifically what it's asking. I admit, I didn't know the exact address of the defendant, but through the internet, and this is an internet case, everyone here knows you can find all kinds of things on the internet. I did find his father's house. I found his mother's house. Mm -hmm. I found his, his sister-in-law's house. It was because there was an obituary posted online one day. And I saw the obituary with the same last name, and I went through the last names, and I figured out the address. These are the same thing lawyers and things do. When they're trying to find and serve someone, how many times have you received things in the mail, and you wonder, how did somebody find out where I live? They use the internet, and they find addresses. I didn't know where he lived, but I was able to by that obituary, find that his father, his mother, his sister-in-law, and his mother-in-law. And the things they got sent in the mail, there's a lawsuit, information about the lawsuit. Sure, I was a little pissed. I added the newspaper article. I did write a handwritten note on it that he was a rat. Rat is constitutionally protected. It's not a threat. Calling someone a snitch is constitutionally protected. It's not a crime to call someone a snitch. I can call anybody in here a name. Calling names is not a crime. Uh, you know, there's articles where I called Miss Katz a name. She couldn't charge me with calling her a name. Same with this, calling this witness a rat is not a crime. The fourth thing, to elude legal process. Again, everything I did 
in no way is trying to tell someone to elude the legal process. How am I telling someone to elude the legal process? If I'm serving you in a lawsuit, the things that I'm posting online are all, you can, you can, you can be able to read them. They're all saying, bring this guy to court. It was part of the other the judicial proceeding that you have to accept that there was a judicial proceeding. In that judicial proceeding, my allegation was that this person created this case for his own benefit to target me. And law enforcement jumped on it. Law enforcement created it. Law enforcement was going after me. And I complained about it on my Facebook. I hope everyone here has a Facebook. I understand one person said that they didn't have a Facebook. But I'm hoping the rest of you have Facebook. I'm hoping, who doesn't complain on Facebook about what happens to them? I was complaining about what was happening to me in my life at that time. There was a judicial proceeding, and there was this person who made these allegations. I filed a lawsuit against him. I called him all kinds of names that this person, at the behest of the police, the behest of law enforcement, had targeted me in what would legally be called and subjective, but I called it objective. Can we get a sidebar? Gentlemen, as I indicated to you during the trial, I will be going to sidebar. Usually I'm able to address any objections to sidebar. Um, usually, okay? If there's a situation where I cannot address it quickly, based upon what I believe the appropriate rules of evidence, I will then excuse you um, for a short time in the jury room. But we, in accordance with the court's request, um, decision, you may proceed, Mr. Fortune. Oops. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was going to get up here and dispute all kinds of things. And then I listened to Mr. Boyle's opening statement, and he kept saying, line by line, that these things that I did, that if I just did that thing, it wouldn't be here. One of the things he said, which I found interesting, was about the newspaper article. The newspaper article where a reporter asked me a question and I responded to that question with his question and everything. In my indictment, that's used as the threat, the threat of force, and the second degree charge that you'll be ready to at some point. He just said in his opening statement that that we wouldn't be here if that's all. But I am here. If you heard it, I didn't say it. He said it. If that was all I did, that we wouldn't be here. Okay? I want you to think about that. We wouldn't be here. That's the prosecutor saying we wouldn't be here. I've been here for eight months. Okay? Don't you remember that? This case again, I was hoping that people understand this is an internet case. I didn't walk up to anybody and shake them up and say anything. I didn't say anything. This internet case I was talking on my Facebook page, I was talking on my uh, website. I've been on the internet since 1995. I've been complaining about law enforcement, complaining about laws, and complaining about policies for over 20 years. Half the people in this courtroom know of me because I particularly do argue about marijuana. I do argue about other things too, if you look. I don't talk about other things, but my name was to call myself an engineer man to publicly criticize the government's marijuana policies. This case isn't about marijuana. I consider it a case about the Constitution and free speech. That's why I talk about free speech. I was actually a free speech activist before I even got on here. I've been talking about free speech for a long time. A couple months after I got out of the Army, I did free speech protests in Philadelphia, in Baltimore, in Glassboro. Yeah. To uh, kind of semi-quote a uh, famous president we got in the past. This is a fake case. 
This is fake. The state has taken my First Amendment right to free speech to talk about, complain about, and express myself. Mr. taking my squarely legal comments. Not one of those comments could be called illegal. I couldn't be charged with, he said this, he should be in jail for saying that. This is an illegal comment. There's no such thing as that in America. This is America, you have the right to express and publish and write on all sentiments. And remember, the state, well, I didn't show you that yet, but the states, uh, uh, let me skip to this for a second. When I was arrested, I was arrested and I was Oops, number two. Again, I'm not aware. I made a mistake. Um, again, back to where I was at. The state has misconstrued my legal statements. My freedom of speech, freedom of expression. They're squarely legal. All corners of the legal parameter of what I said is legal. They've taken it and they're trying to squeeze my squarely legal statements, comments, actions into this round hole of criminality. And I say trying because that's what they're trying to do now. That's what this proceeding is about. And the only way they are successful in that is if you 12 people sign off on that. And if at the end of this case you say guilty. If you 12 people say guilty, then they will have successfully put my squarely legal comments through the round hole of criminality and I believe back the country up at least 240 years before the Constitution back to the Peter Zenger trials. Again, as part of discovery, the state downloaded 1,500 pages of my Facebook postings. I've been posting on Facebook. I'm a pro prolific poster. Like I have my phone, I have my iPad, I have my laptop, everywhere I go, I'm constantly Facebooking. I got hooked on Facebook, I admit it. I got locked up, I had Facebook withdrawal. <laughs> Toast. Facebook terms of service. Facebook didn't even delete the comments I made on Facebook. I hope again. You are on Facebook. I hope that you understand Facebook. If you post things on Facebook, they take them off, they delete them. They suspend you, things like that. The state mined my Facebook. 1,500 pages. I believe the state's going to present less than 40 comments off of my Facebook page to say that this is somehow criminal. Again, same thing with my Instagram. I don't remember the exact number. I think it's around 700 pages, way more than I can look at. They gave all this stuff to me as I flipped through it. Yeah, I remember that from two years ago. I remember that from a year ago. They took a, com a couple comments off of my Instagram. Again, said somehow that I was a criminal for posting these things. They mind that too. Same thing with my Twitter. I haven't seen my Twitter page in since I went to jail. 
I can't remember my Twitter handle. But I know that everything I said on Twitter is still there. I know the very first thing you see at Twitter is the things that Mr. Uh, Boyle just talked about. That newspaper article, the image, the picture, the picture of the witness. The witness posed for that picture too. I'd like to get it out. I didn't steal it off his Facebook page. He came to my place and posed for a picture. I took his picture and I used his picture. He came to sue me for that. He gave me that picture. He posed for it. The state has turned that into a crime to post it. Did I call him a rat? Yep. Did I call him a snitch? Yep. Did I call him a combat? Yep. It's all protected free speech stuff. I can call him that. I can say that. These are my opinions. I expressed it. Again, if you believe in the First Amendment, you will have to look at these things to say not guilty. Now, if you don't believe in the First Amendment, or if you don't believe the First Amendment protects you, then you will find me guilty because I'm not denying anything. I called him a rat, I called him a snitch, I called him a comment. I want him to come to court, I'd like to say his face. I called him a pill pusher, I'm a pipe head, I'm a little snobby, I don't want to do marijuana. <clears throat> I have the exact same opinion probably as most of you about pill pushers and heroin users. I called him a froster, I called him a liar. Again, First of all, they're true. Why can't I say a true statement? The document that the state just talked about, that purportedly, I think that was the word you used, purportedly was about the witness's background. They're public documents. Public documents they got in this building. There's an office downstairs, criminal records. There's a little computer there. And you can type anybody's name in it. And what pops up, pops up. I typed his name in, and it just popped up. They won't print it here, so I took my phone. I took pictures, page after page. I did it actually with a reporter standing next to me. A reporter that I have on my witness list. At that time, again, remember, bring it back to a year ago right now. I was running for Congress too at the time. But bring it back to a year ago right now. That's when this happened. I think he used the day October 9th. I forget the dates he used, but it was now. It was about a year ago now. At the time, I wasn't thinking about a witness tampering case. I didn't know the state would one day take all the things I said and just screw it into this illegal act and find me guilty and try to get you to find me guilty of that. That's not what, at that time, I was dealing with. Put yourself in my position. I'm Jack Lee. Three years I want. During the trial, you may ask what I call your instructions. You are this, to disregard the argument that if you were in my position, if you were in my shoes, if you were me. Disregard that. That is not appropriate. But however we've addressed that issue, I don't think we have a problem. Thank you. Good, Mr. Oops, oops, oops. Sorry. Think? So we have to take this one away. I was going to say, I'm into peace and love. In 20 something years I've been public, my entire adult life, I have no violence. I'm a peace and love guy. I come into my business, first thing you see me, come in, big sign, peace and love. I uh, admit yeah, I'm a black hippie type guy. I'll tell you right now, I wish I had a bomb. That's what I wish I had right now. I would have done this a whole lot smoother had I smoked a bomb this morning, took a bomb away. Technically, is it illegal? Yeah. The New Jersey's passed this medical marijuana
Um, eight months I've been facing these charges. I'm happy that I finally got to express my opening statement about those charges. During this case, you will see the state presenting evidence, and I will take the stand and give my side of each one of these things. I'm glad I'm not here in the orange suit right now. You know the prosecutor told me yesterday that she would like me to stay in one. Sustained disregard the statement that was made. Dis disregard that also. With that. Disregard that. With that. I'm just going to end. Like I said, I had a lot to say. I'm a little nervous. Did get the phone with this morning. Um, the things I would say would probably cause more people to complain about the things I had to say. I wouldn't be allowed to say. So I'm not going to say anything else. I hope at the end of this case, you send me home, not in harm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr.